it. Well, if he's the network administrator for you know whatever corporation, now you know what devices they're using, and you haven't even done anything, and you know, and you may even know what vulnerabilities he has. I mean, so you know, and that this is all passive. You haven't even touched any any you know stuff that you're talking about now. So website-based tools again, not necessarily something you'd have to use Firefox for, but uh, website-based tools. Nmaps, you don't have Nmap on your computer, fine, just go, there's a website, Nmap online that you can use. Leak checkers and hosted hash crackers, and I'll talk about a few of these uh, directly. So here's, here's a site that I, uh, one example of a site that you may use, centralops.net. This has a whole bunch of tools, and I won't go into all the specifics, but you can do trace routes, pings, you know, all the tools that you could do from a command line you can do from a site like this. this so this is pretty cool. Um, and, and these are all free things that you can do. So if you're, you maybe, maybe you're you know, a, a command line cripple like I am and, and you, you need a GUI sometimes to, to get through the tool. Well, here you go. This is a great way to do it. Here you go, Nmap Online. So you, don't, you're, you get to your pen testing site and for whatever reason you, got, you need Nmap and you don't have it. Well, here you go, Nmap Online. Go to this website, type in your target, boom. Now, granted, you have a, pro a few problems here. Well, first of all, that's not my IP because I am using Tor. But you can customize the scan. You know, if you know the command line things you want to do here, uh, in the custom scan here, set up whatever you want to do and scan it. You're going to get your results right there. So quick and easy way to use uh, an online tool if you don't have something that you need. What's that? Terms of service? Go read them before you, I mean, yeah. Right, and, and like we, and John mentioned to me, um, and we'll, we may talk about this a little later, you, um, Depending upon, you know, you, you're trying to disguise where you're coming from, Tor might be a good idea to use once you're doing active tests. Because, you know, if, if they know where you're coming from now, you've kind of given yourself away. So Tor is not a perfect solution, but in this case, it provides you with what you want. You're disguising your own identity. This, this is a good ex ex example of a tool that you might use uh, if you're doing, say, a, a vulnerability assessment, you're already on the inside and you're doing vulnerability assessments. So this is kind of a, this Hacker Whacker, uh, GRC, or Gibson Research also has a, a leak, leak checker. This is going to look kind of from the inside and say, hey, you're vulnerable to this and this and that sort of thing. So something that's ne not necessarily going to work from a, a, you know, a, a black box type penetration test, but if you're on the inside doing a vulnerability assessment, something that you might want to consider. These are all examples of websites that have um, online hash crackers. So you, you, you've grabbed a um, whatever, MD5 or you know, your landman hash off of a website, you don't have your tables with you and you want to crack them. Post them on the website. You know, it may take a day or two, but uh, you may get the results back. And a caveat here now. If you're, do, if you're doing a penetration test, you may, you probably have signed some sort of non-disclosure agreement with your client that you're not going to reveal their data. Well, if you post their landman hashes or whatever on, on this website, it's pretty much publicly available now. Now, that doesn't say this hash is associated with this particular company, but you're still exposing their data to the web. So you, be care, you want to be careful about using these sort of services. Here's a good example. If you're familiar with like SETI at home and all those distributed computing projects, this is a rainbow table distributing, or distributed computing project. So you sign up, it uses your CPU cycles when you're not using your computer, and you're basically helping them generate you know, large scale t rainbow tables for Landman or NTLM or what, you know, whatever you want to do, MD, MD5 and such. So if this is, and, and again, they also have a, a submission tool here where you can submit a, submit a hash and get information back. So this is kind of cool stuff to use. Stuff that's out there, you know, I'm at the site and I forgot my drive that has my tables on, you know, this may help you in that case. Uh, this is uh, Johnny Long's Google Hacking Database. It hasn't been updated in a few years. However, 
good examples, you know, you know, you don't necessarily need this website to show you everything, but this will give you a good start of, you know, the whole concept of Google hacking is finding information that's not supposed to be on the web, but the, you know, Google's spiders have crawled to it because of inadequate permissions or whatever. So, I mean, I can't understate the power of these things. I mean, there are people that just put their, you know, default installs on the thing. There's password lists. There's, you know, one of my friends likes to search foreign governments for password. I mean, he's found all kinds of stuff that's available out there. Um, so, and this is, of course, you, you know, this is just using what's publicly available already out there. Information that's not necessarily supposed to be on the web. Yes? Yeah, we can, we'll, we can post it online for you. Um, and then do, don't, uh, don't discount also, and I'll add this here, don't discount the using like Google Cache or like uh, archive or uh, Internet Archives. So inf some company has some sensitive data exposed on their website. They take it down and they think they're safe, but Google Cache, Google cached it maybe, or Archives, you know, are already online. So you may find some stuff out there, right? Using Firefox plugins and extensions, uh, we've listed a couple here that we're going to talk about. The first one is uh, what's called the Firefox Catalog of Auditing Extensions, or Firecat. Uh, this is currently in a release four, and it's available. And what this gives you is about 60 extensions, and, and it's continuously growing. So, uh, and it's got them out in a nice, uh, those of you that are familiar with the mind map format that lays them out. And I'll show you a screen here in just a second of what it looks like and talk to you just a little bit about it. And then we're going to talk about a couple of examples that we're going to walk through, uh, not necessarily in the order shown here, but uh, uh, Passive Recon, Exploit Me, which is a group of uh, uh, exploit tools, and then uh, a tool called Tamper Data that we find very useful. This here is uh, kind of an eye test. This is the mind map for Firecat. And uh, just to show you a couple of things that are there, uh, if you're using proxies or web utilities, here's a grouping of those, and it shows you the plugins that you can get. Don't have to do all of them. You can do one or two, whatever you're familiar with. Uh, then it talks about information gathering. These are the ones that uh, have been pretty much the primary focus of what this talk is about. And as you can see, there are a number of sub areas under there. Uh, Tools like uh, location information, doing enumerating, fingerprinting, data mining, uh, Googling, spidering. Next is uh, doing security auditing. These things uh, like proxies, um, web filters and stuff. These are uh, kind of neat tools and there's, there's a lot of them like you see and the guy's constantly updating the site, updating the list as new plugins and stuff are made available. And then uh, occasionally you do need to do some editing. So if you need to edit with Firefox or something, here's uh, some uh, Firefox extensions and plugins for doing that. And then uh, network utilities. These are always quite useful. Doing FTP, uh, intrusion detection, sniffers, database, Wi-Fi. Uh, and then there's also some miscellaneous ones as well as uh, some others. But neat site, do a search for the term Firecat on Google and it will take you right there. Uh, you may get directed to a link that shows version 1.2. If you do, go back to Google, look at another one. I think it's the second link that shows up now is version 1.4, which is the latest release. We wanted to, like we said, we got three examples of, of and this is certainly not uh, an exhaustive list of the, the best stuff out there. This is just three things that we picked there, that we think are kind of cool. The first one is actually a series of three extensions called Exploit Me. There's three extensions. Uh, this was introduced at Sector in Toronto last year by the guys at Security Compass. Uh, they actually had a talk at Sector specifically for these tools. So if you want more details than I'm giving you here, download their talk from the Sector website. Uh, and you get a whole bunch of information. The first one is uh, XS XSSME, which is a cross-site scripting tool. It searches for uh, cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. Um, if you're a big fan of uh, looking for uh, cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, there's a website, xsssed.com, 
It's basically a re repository of XSS vulnerabilities. In fact, you can even sort them by page rank. So if you sort them, the number one one that's going to come up is Yahoo. There's about 50 XSS vulnerabilities on different Yahoo pages. So pretty interesting site in terms of uh, stuff that's already out there. The second one is uh, SQL Inject Me. I'll show you a picture of this on the next slide. Um, and this is, ju again, just testing SQL injection uh, vulnerabilities. And then the third one is Access Me. And this is basically when you surf to a website that requires you to enter some sort of permissions to get to, Access Me will try to access the site without those permissions to see if, it, if there are permission vulnerabilities there. Uh, th there's a couple tools that they're talking about releasing in the future. Web Service Me, Overflow Me, Enumerate Me, and Brute Force Me. So these may come out in the near future. Hopefully they're still working on them. Here's an example of, of XSS Me. Um, it's simply, it's a sidebar. You click on it and it's a sidebar and it comes up. And if you've got forms or uh, if you've got forms in your web page, um, they're going to be listed on the sidebar. For example, the, uh, the 2600 page has a form on the sidebar, or so it's displayed on the sidebar. And you literally just have to enter information, any, any valid information in the fields, and then you can test. There's, also, there's a whole library of, of tests where you can just run through you know, a, a series of, of tests and, and, then, and then there will be a report to tell you this, this particular field or form was vulnerable to this particular exploit. So that's kind of cool. Um, now again, you click on that button to test, you realize what you're doing. You know, you're accessing somebody's website in a way it wasn't intended. You're, you may be breaking the law. So I didn't click on this button, but you know, it's there. SQL Inject Me is the same sort of thing. You've got a sidebar that comes out, and any forms that are uh, visible on the page will show up in the tabs. And you can simply you know, test. You can test like the top, the most common vulnerabilities, or you can test all the ones in the library. So literally, just click on it, and you'll get a report. Uh, and I mean, so is point and click the best way to go? Maybe or maybe not. But if you want to sit there and manually type, uh, you know, um, whatever SQL strings you're trying to test, you know, instead of doing them one at a time, okay, this one works, this one doesn't work, this is going to do it all for you. This doesn't replace your, you know, the importance for you to learn this stuff yourself, but this, this helps you automate it a little bit. Also, a disclaimer that this isn't necessarily going to find every single vulnerability. There may be something out there that this doesn't find, but it's, you know, it's a good start. This is, this is kind of like your the Nessus scan, you know, it's going to find a lot of stuff, but it's not going to find everything, and it doesn't absolve you from digging deeper. The second one that I want to talk about is called Tamper Data. Tamper Data it, uh, acts like a, a, a mini proxy server in your browser, and it allows you to view and modify um, HTTPS headers as they're sent and returned to your computer. Uh, you can also trace time, times and responses and stuff like that. Uh, this is popular, unfortunately, this has become popular for, for hacking uh, e-commerce sites that don't do server-side validation. In other words, and I'll show you an example here. And then if you search, sadly, if you search on YouTube, you'll find that the, probably the most popular use for this is like changing the high score on like flash-based games so you have the high score. I mean, it's kind of silly, but... Um, but it could be fun. <laughs> and I can't see my screen here, but I'm going to try to give you just a small example. I'll also caveat this, that the example I'm giving you here is, is already a known website that's vulnerable. I'm not, this is not the first time somebody's done this, and I'm not going to go through with it completely, but I'll, just to give you an example. Okay, there's a device called, uh, you know what the TV Be Gone is, it, it search, goes through all the code. Well, there's another device called the Ninja Remote, and it gives you more, actually gives you a little bit more capability. You can actually change channels and change the volume and stuff like that. Well, this, this, is the button, this device, you can buy them on this page. So, 
the links here are basically the more you buy, the cheaper they are. So the first one is five Ninja remotes for $49.95 plus shipping. 